Hello everyone, Mr. O again. Um, today I'm here to show you our subtraction finger chart. And like every other video in this series, um, there will be two parts. The first part will be demonstrating the material that we have in the classroom, showing how to use it, showing the ways that we practice it so that we will master it and learn it. And the second part of the video will be demonstrating how you can do it at your house with the principles that I have shared with you. Um, if you're new to this video series, the principles will be shared in the comments. Scratch that. They'll be shared in the information section of this video. All right, here comes the subtraction finger chart. This is our subtraction finger chart. You'll notice that it looks slightly different than our addition finger chart. There are numbers starting with 18 that run along the top and then down the side to one. And then in blue we have minus nine, minus eight, minus seven, minus six, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, and minus one, and all of the answers here in the middle. So if I wanted to use this, I will do a demonstration down here though because I can't hold it high enough and show with both fingers. So again I have a box of prepared equations and answers and my first equation 3 minus 2 equals, this is a fact I know, 3 minus 2 equals 1. But if I want to check that first I'll find my 3 first along the top, 18, eight, 3, keep your finger on 3, and now over here in the blue I'm going to look for minus 2. Alright, now I'm going to slide, the red will go straight up and down, and the blue will go straight across, and I will slide until they intersect, and they intersect at the 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, and that is a fact. I know. So I'll place it here. Then I would find my answer in my container of answers and then I'm going to use my mute chart. And again my mute chart 18 through 1 along the side minus 9 minus 8 minus 7 minus 6 minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 along the other side. So 3 minus 2 3 I'll find that 3 minus 2 and the answer will belong there. 3 minus 2. All right, let's draw another. Ten minus 5 equals. I know this fact also because I know it's addition counterpart. I know 5 plus 5 is 10, so I know that 10 minus 5 is 5. Well, let me just double check. I'll find 10 along the red. 10. And now I'll find minus 5 going down the blue. All right. Slide to where they intersect. And 10 minus 5 is, in fact, 5. Find that answer. And place it on our mute chart where it belongs. All right. One last one. The equation 11 minus 2. Hmm, I don't know that one. 11, I'm going to count backwards. 10, 9. 11 minus 2 is 9. Let me double check. Find 11. I'll find minus 2. And I find that they intersect at 9. 11 minus 2 is 9. Now that was a fact I'm clearly still practicing. Now, quick question for you. How do you know when you would put an equation in a fact I still know? Well, for me, facts I still know, those are facts I know in a snap. They come to me right away. I don't have to count in my head. I don't have to think about it. I just know that 3 minus 2 is 1 and 10 minus 5 is 5. 
but I didn't know that 11 minus 2 was 9 like that, hence why it's a fact I'm still practicing. All right, for all math facts, you have to see it, say it, write it. So I'll open up my math book. Yours might look different at home. Maybe it's just another notebook. Maybe it does have grid square paper like this. All right, I'm going to open to my next blank page. And again, I'm going to draw a line down the center so that I have a section for facts I know and facts I am still practicing. So I knew 3 minus 2 equaled 1. I knew 10 minus 5 equaled 5. But I was still practicing 11 minus 2 equals 9. In the end, your book might look something like this. All right, that is how you would use the material that we have in the classroom. Now, at home, you'll have sheets of paper that look very, very similar. So if I restore my answers and equations, you can see that this is the material in the classroom. This is the material at home. This one is slightly smaller, and it's smaller so that it could fit on a single sheet of paper. But it has the numbers along the top, 18 all the way down to 1, and along the side, minus 9, minus 8, minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. So it will work just like our classroom chart. And similarly, we have our mute chart and our piece of paper similarly has 18 all the way to 1 along the top and minus 9 through minus 1 on the side with blank spaces in here. So I can set my class material over on the side and now I'll use my at home material. Okay, just like the math addition or the addition finger chart we have a sheet of equations and answers for you to cut out and just like that one you're going to cut along all of the black lines now in that last video i recommended you get two ziploc bags such as this and if i were going to do this at home i'm going to put a label on each bag so on this first bag i'm going to call it my subtraction equation so i'll put the subtraction sign, because I don't want to write the whole thing, minus, and then EQ. EQ stands for equations. So that'll be enough of a label for you. And then the other side will be subtraction answers. So I'll just put minus sign ANS, which is short for answers. So subtraction answers. All right, and I went through and I cut out a few equations already. I also cut out the facts I know label and the facts I'm still practicing label so I can use those. So let me put my answers in my bag and my equations in my bag. All right, now flip over your mute chart because we're gonna see the ones we know on our own first. All right, I go into my equation bag, and I draw out the following equation. 7 minus 6. I know that. 7 minus 6 is 1. So I'll come to my mute chart, look for 7 along the top. Then I'll find minus 6, and I will slide to where they intersect and place my answer, 1. 7 minus 6, they intersect right there, 1. All right. And I'll go back to my equation bag. Yours will be more full than mine. And I will pull out the equation. 9 minus 7 equals. Hmm. I don't know that fact right away. I can think of maybe an addition problem. What plus 7 equals 9? 7 plus 2 is 9. Let me see if 9 minus 7 equals 2. 9 minus 7, it does equal 2. That was clearly a fact I'm still practicing, though, since I didn't know it in a snap. 
All right, so 9 minus 7 equals 2. I'll find where that belongs on my mute chart and place it. And just like I did before, I'll record the facts I know and the facts I'm still practicing in my math book. All right, that is our subtraction finger chart. Now, I really want to emphasize, see it, say it, write it. These three things will help your brain to remember to practice and practice and practice each fact because your brain learns through many different ways. It learns through all of your senses, through sight, through smell, taste, sound, and touch. Now, we're not going to learn our subtraction facts through tasting them, but we will definitely see the equation 9 minus 7 equals 2, and seeing it is one way that your brain processes it. Hearing it and saying it, 9 minus 7 equals 2, is another way that your brain will process it. And finally, the act of writing it, the touch, the muscle memory that goes into writing the numbers 9 minus 7 equals 2 will also help your brain to remember that fact. All right, that's the subtraction finger chart. This is one of those materials that you can practice over and over and over again because there are going to be many, many equations in that little baggie for you. So if you'd like and you want to maybe build the whole thing, maybe... You could add a step. You could challenge yourself, and each time you have an answer, you could go ahead and glue it down. And so at the very end, your mute chart will have all of your answers on it, and it will look just like your control chart. That might be really neat. And it's something you could do a little bit each day. And by gluing it, the answers won't be blown off your sheet of paper. It could be a nice long project. I'd love to see it if you complete it.